So the good thing is, since we've built this so nicely in Adobe Illustrator, we should be able to bring it into Photoshop layers. Then it'll be really easy to color up and also distress. And the easiest way to accomplish this is to bring the separate parts of your type into separate layers. So I'll take my top layer, which is this logos word, and I'll create a new layer, paste in front, let me lock that, and then I'll take the next highest layer, which is our little vector distress, cut that, make a new layer, paste it in front, and then the layer below that is our type, and I'll create a new layer, paste that in front. Below that is our shadow. Cut that, create a new layer, paste. So now that we've got this all in separate layers, we go to File Export, and we'll save this as a Photoshop PSD, hit Export, and then Let's choose 300 DPI, have right layers clicked, and maximum editability clicked, and then just hit OK. And then we go to Photoshop, and let's open that file. And you'll notice in Photoshop how everything is in separate layers. Now, these are all in folders in separate layers, and we don't really need that. So let's just select these layers and ungroup them. I'm doing a Command Shift G. And it looks like I had some of this stuff in separate groups within those layers. So I'll just go ahead and merge those back together. So we have our logos, we have our shading, we have our type, we have our shadow, we have our background. So in Photoshop, I like to add distress by using layer masks. And the reason is, if you ever wanna change that distress or get rid of it or just manipulate it, you haven't messed up any of your actual artwork so it's non-destructive. I like to paint the texture into those layers with Photoshop brushes, just because it's so fast. We could paint the distress in individually with these layers and get really cool effects, but what I'll go ahead and do is I'm just gonna regroup those layers all into one, separate from the background, and I can apply a layer mask to that group. So I'll go layer, Layer mask, reveal all. And I think I have some brushes in here. Um, let me see if they're loaded. And I'll give you some of these for free, by the way. And I don't, okay. This is a um, Plastisol brush and it's a Plastisol texture. And what Plastisol is, is it's the ink on t-shirts and it's what gives vintage t-shirts that cracked look because what happens is the ink dries over time and you wash it a million times and it, it cracks and that's what kind of gives it that thrift shop kind of look. So all I need to do is um, have black as my color that I'm painting and I paint into that layer mask and you don't paint like a paintbrush where you move it around. You actually just position it and click. Oh, and let me make sure my flow is turned up to 100%. Otherwise, we won't be able to see it. And I just clicked once and all of a sudden we have a really nice texture that looks like cracked Plastisol ink. So I'll give you that brush. Let me go back in my history and I'll undo that. Let me show you one more brush. Here's a, a bad photocopy brush. So this looks like 
um, you ran the art through like a broken photocopier. Just click once, super easy. I'll show you one more. I have a vintage book cover. It's actually a book I found on the street. It's just covered in mold and super gross, but that makes for a really good Photoshop distress brush. I'll give you this brush too. All you do, it's an ABR file, which is a Photoshop brush file. Just double click on that and it loads it into your brush palette. You can scale these brushes up or down with your little bracket keys. And I'll just click once in there and we've got a really nice texture. So the other thing we can do is because this is sort of a vertical brush, we can use our rotate view tool. Let me just rotate this 90 degrees, zoom out a bit. And this is actually distress I want to add to the background. So we'll just add a new layer right in the middle there. And I'm actually painting straight into the background. I'm not painting into a layer mask. And let me just click that once. And turn our artboard back to normal. Actually, let's zoom in so you can see it. So that adds a really nice background texture.